dust we've come, in dust we are, and shall return. Be still, my soul, Lord, make me old, Lord, make me old. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Well, good evening, friends, and welcome to Grace and Peace, Austin. We're a gospel-formed family for the city, and there's room for you. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service Ash Wednesday is the traditional worship service that kicks off the season of Lent. And the season of Lent is that time of preparation for Easter. It's that time when we prepare our hearts through repentance and a season of penitence, of reflecting upon the ways that we need Christ, the ways that we fail Christ, the ways that we need to lean into following him through faith as we journey with him toward the cross and the resurrection. And so Lent is traditionally a time of repentance, as I've mentioned, but it's not a time without joy, and it's not a time without hope. In fact, just the opposite. As we walk with Jesus, we can't help but have hope and joy because we are with him. And because, friends, we know the end of the story. We know that Christ has defeated death and that he is alive, he is risen, and he is ruling our hearts even now. And he is present with us as we worship. So we're so glad that you're here and worshiping. My name is John. I'm the pastor here. This is Mac. We're both going to be on screen for the duration of this service. That's a little bit uh, differently than the way we've done it in the past, but this whole week is a bit different, right? And so I'm trusting that you're safe and that you're well, and maybe that you even have power back on in your house if you're joining us in the great state of Texas. Friends, we're going to worship. It's warm in here. I hope you're warm in your house. Let us join our hearts together as we begin our time of worship with the call to worship. You'll find it printed there in your bulletin. By the way, as we go throughout this worship service, uh, we're not going to be able to have an imposition of ashes, obviously, which is one of the hallmarks of an Ash Wednesday service. But we're going to have a lot of prayer and a lot of singing together. And we're going to do it liturgically and responsively. And so you're going to be called upon to engage and just follow our lead. Okay? And so here we go. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Why, why are you cast down, down my, my soul? And why, why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for we shall yet praise him, our help and our, our God. God. Amen. Amen. Let's continue on with this responsive call um, to this prayer of invocation, which is next, um, right below it in your bulletin. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Teach, Teach us, Lord, to count, to count our days, that, that we, we may gain, gain a wise heart. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, let's... Uh, continue in our worship with a prayer of confession. Um, again, we're going to do things a little bit differently this evening. This particular confession is uh, the words of Psalm 51 directly, verses 1 through 17. And so we're going to pray as we read scripture, and Mac is going to lead us in singing this scripture as well. I'm going to ask you to join me in the verses, the spoken prayer, and then Mac is going to invite you to join in song with the italicized lyrics. So again, follow our lead, let us pray together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Oh, have mercy, God, according to your steadfast love, according to the richness of your tenderness and grace. Wash 
Wash me thoroughly from all of my iniquity. Lord, take all of the sin from me, for against you I am wrong. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Lord, my sins I know, they seem to all before me go. From me does not but evil flow, I can't escape the so you are justified and blameless, Lord, if you decide to judge me in my heart and pride, for I was born in sin. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. You shall wash me clean, whiter than the snow I'll be. From bloody into purity, from darkness into light. So I'll lift up my eyes and praise you with a heart contrite. In me again you will delight, so open up my lips. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let these bones that you have broken rejoice, rejoice. Let me hear and joy and gladness. Your voice, your voice, create in me a clean heart, God. Renew your spirit in me, God. You cast me not away, O oh God. Restore to me your joy, create in me. Create in me a clean heart, God. Renew your spirit in me, God. You cast me not away, O oh God. Restore to me. matchless name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, friends, lift up your head and your hearts and hear this word of assurance. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He, being Christ, was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. Friends, if your faith is in Jesus Christ, you are healed, you are whole and you are indeed loved. Continue on as we worship. Mac will lead us in our Old Testament lesson from the prophet Joel. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave the blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate the fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the generation, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing, even nursing infants, let the bridegroom leave his room, in the bride her chamber, 
Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the same God that we find in the prophets, the God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, this very same God has revealed himself to us in Jesus as we know him in the Gospels. And so hear the Gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Our gracious God, though this isn't the way that we would have desired to spend this worship service together, we are grateful for it. We are grateful that indeed we are together, united by faith, united by your Spirit even though we are divided by time and by distance. We pray that as we reflect upon your words, Jesus, that you would reveal yourself to us in all of your glory. We pray also that you would reveal ourselves and our true nature and state of being to us. Would you indeed help us to wrap our minds and indeed our hearts around the reality that we are dust and to dust we shall return but by the grace of Christ. But because of your grace, O oh Jesus, remind us that death is not the end and help us to live now with the end in mind. The life that we have with you, a life of fullness and flourishing for all eternity. So we thank you in advance for your words and what you will do in and for us with them. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I know that Ash Wednesday, uh, particularly the imposition of ashes, may not be a familiar liturgy to you. It may not be a regular rhythm of worship that you grew up with. I mean, it wasn't for me either. Uh, and that's okay. We can learn together. Uh, Ash Wednesday is not commanded in the scriptures, but it's been given to us by our fathers and mothers who have gone before us as a wise practice and a way of reminding us the truest realities, not just of who God is, but of who we are. I also know this, that these words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Those are the words that would have been spoken over you if you were here with us in person and we were able to have an ashing ceremony, an imposition of ash, I should say, ceremony. Those are the words that you would hear. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And I know that those words are not the most enthusiastic, not the most motivating words, perhaps, that you are desiring to hear when you want to dig in and be encouraged to do life well. Not just the life of the age to come, following our death and our resurrection in Christ, but this life right now, when you want to be motivated to do this life well. 
This life that involves snowstorms and this life that involves lack of power, this life that involves pandemics, this life that involves neighbors who need our love, this life. When you want to do this life well, these aren't necessarily the words that your heart turns to. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. And so in the few minutes of reflection that we have together, I want to encourage you and remind myself as well that indeed these are words and the reality behind them that Jesus lays out in Matthew chapter 6 ought to be our motivation to bring us excitement and even joy as we go forth to live this life well. And here's what I mean. Here's the logic of the ashes, if you will. The first uh, logic is this, and it has to do with our life in the age to come. We will, each one of us, die. And that's what the ashes signify. We are from dust and we will return to dust in this life. And there's no way around that. Barring Christ's return, we will, each of us, die. And so when that ash is laid on your forehead and when you feel it, and when you see it in the mirror and feel the grit on your forehead, it is to remind you of this reality that each of us will die. And this reminder ought to turn our hearts to this. Our only hope for life following our death is the victory that Jesus has won for us as he defeated death in his death and triumphed definitively in his resurrection over the power of death. And so the encouragement of the ashes is for the life to come. And that ought to encourage our hearts that Christ has defeated death. Right? That enemy that will come for each and every one of us has been defeated. And our hope is in Christ. And so, in an Ash Wednesday service, we turn our hearts toward repentance and confession, turning away from the sin that separates us from God and leads us toward death and destruction, and turning toward Christ and receiving him through faith and reminding ourselves of the gift that we have if we have already received Christ through faith, of the fullness of life forever and ever. Amen. That's the first logic of the ashes. But here's the second logic of the ashes. The ashes aren't just to encourage us to place our hope and our thoughts and our attention on the life to come. The ashes are to encourage and motivate us for this life, this life that we have right now. Remember that you are dust. We prayed, teach us, Lord, to count our days. One pastor has put, us, uh, put it this way, that a wise person uh, knows the length of their leash. Teach us, Lord, to count our days so that we might gain a wise heart, so that we might know and be motivated to live wisely right now. Friends, this is the theme and the message of the entire book of Ecclesiastes that we're going to be meditating in throughout the season of Lent. That in order to live well now, we have to keep the end in mind. And the end is that this life will end in death, but fullness of life will continue for all eternity in Christ. How does that help us and motivate us to live well now? Well, Jesus puts it this way. In verse 19, he says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss, moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. The ashes, friends, encourage us to stop the unwise and unfruitful living that looks like laying up for ourselves treasures on earth. How much of our time how much of my time, how much of my energy, how much of my love is given toward pursuits and activities and things and people that I can manipulate and that I can leverage for my own gain, for my own treasure? How much of our lives are spent trying to build Wealth, beauty, power, significance, so that we can have a sense of assurance that we matter, that we have value, so that we can find happiness. Friends, this is what Jesus is getting at when he says, laying up for yourselves 
treasure on earth? And how does the ash help us put down this foolish, unwise way of living? Well, it reminds us just what Jesus says, that that treasure will be nothing but food for moths and an oxidized pile of rust. Those things can't fulfill. This isn't the way that we were meant to live. How do you know that, you might ask? I know that this isn't the way that we were meant to live. One, because Jesus tells us, and two, because as we pursue those treasures, we do it at the expense of others, and we hurt others, and we do damage to them in the process. And so, friends, the ashes encourage us of the reality of our finitude, that we will one day be dust. And these things that we turn to, they are dusty, and they cannot fulfill us. And they too will be dust. And so stop your silly, foolish living, the ashes tell us. Jesus tells us through the liturgy of the ashes. But don't just put down foolish living. Take up wise living. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. With that time that you now have, these precious moments that we have in this life, live well. Live in a way that is storing up and adding value to the life that we will have in the age to come through the grace of Christ. Another way of thinking of it is live now the way that we will live then for eternity. And the ashes tell us that that's the only way to live. And what, friends, does that look like? Well, here's your homework assignment. Maybe you're still snowed in, and maybe you're not, but carve out a few moments sometime in the rest of this week, and reflect further upon Matthew chapter 6 and Jesus' instructions there. He's telling us how to live with the end in mind. He's giving us a glimpse of what it looks like to lay up treasure in heaven. If you have a little more time, spend time in Matthew 5 through 7, the entire Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus lays it out more fully and more gloriously. And friends, if you don't have time to do that, that's okay. It's our job at Grace and Peace Austin to work it out together. And we'll continue to do that in the days and weeks and years ahead. Would you pray with me as we thank Jesus for the ashes that remind us of who he is and who we are? Uh, Jesus, I just prayed the prayer in the introduction to the prayer. But we want to do that now and say thank you for your words and your reminders that you are the one human being who has defeated death because you are not only human but you are fully divine you are god with us and god for us and so we thank you for the life that we have in you we truly thank you for the life that is to come and we thank you for the life that we have right now by your spirit would you help us to live it well and we'll give you the glory we pray it in jesus name amen Why don't we continue now um, in our worship together by singing together this song of reflection, wisdom, and grace. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to your ways. Oh, teach us to Teacher. 
Join me now. My own death, death is a limit, O Lord, upon which my last cry will dash like waves against the face of a cliff. If I yet have any misplaced confidence in my own strength, my own power, my own power, or ability or ambition, let it here be crushed, and rightfully so. Death makes a mockery of my foolish pride, reminding me that I am not the measure of all things, nor the center of the world, nor the Lord of my life. My strivings to make meaning from my own existence apart from you, to build a kingdom of my own, to make myself secure, have been and always were in vain. Death, remembered in Lenten ash, shatters such confusion and announces publicly how powerless I am. So let it be. As I decrease, O Lord, let your glory be revealed in and through my very weakness. Let my entire worth now be defined by your adoring love, O Lord. For in light of my finitude, there is nothing else that can comfort or satisfy the hurts, longings, and loves of my mortal body and of my immortal soul. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we'll spend a brief amount of time now passing the peace that we have in Christ to one another. Uh, and it's all online this time, so do so through the chat box here on YouTube or those that you're sitting and, and, and worshiping with at home. So I'll say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's take about 30 seconds to a minute passing the peace of Christ. turn towards the part of the service where we would be um, having the ashes be imposed upon us. And so um, it's odd that we can't do that in person this time. Um, so why don't we, as we enter into this prayer and as I lead us in this prayer on the reflection of the ashes, um, dwell upon that fact that we've talked about just now that we are dust, uh, and from dust into dust will return, uh, created by the Almighty God. And so I'll lead us in this prayer now. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes remind us of our mortality and penitence, and teach us again that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Well, before we go and sing a last ascending song, we labor unto glory. If you're standing or sitting at home, why don't we stand together for this last one? My God, my God, where'er I go, glory, where I reap and where I sow, glory, when my hand it grips the thorn, glory, my heart tells in the storm, glory, glory. 
Happy Wednesday evening to you all. It's hard to fathom that Sunday should actually be a really nice day. And so we're planning on worshiping in person at Brentwood Bible, those of us who are able to gather. And so be sure to check out uh, the sign up registration form that's linked in the newsletter uh, so that you can join us on Sunday morning for worship, either at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. And we will make sure to have uh, the 9 a.m. live stream ready to go for you. As well, by the way, we're going to make sure that we have a backup recording just in case things don't go well with the live stream. So we'll make sure that everybody is covered in worship on Sunday, whether in person or virtually. So grateful that you could be with us for this Ash Wednesday service. And so let me send you now with God's benediction. This is his good and his sending word to us. May the Lord of all compassion satisfy you in the morning with his steadfast love so that you may rejoice and be glad all of your days. May the favor of the Lord our God be upon you, and may the work of your hands prosper. Amen. Go forth, remembering who you are and to whom you belong. With God's, God's help, help, we will. Go now in his peace. Mm -hmm.